So like you leaving that date and after spending some time with her, were you like, okay, this girl's got it. She's probably going to find somebody going to be engaged. How did you leave Katie after that date? Well, and actually I will say this, they cut out something else that I did on the season where we set up a bar and I made drinks for all the guys and gave them advice and stuff, uh, like all of paradise role. Mm -hmm. Um, so I did end up getting to meet Blake and Andrew. And so I feel like I really got a complete picture of everything. Okay. And I also think those guys needed some, like, like some sort of guidance from somebody, you know? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And so that that was nice to really get to know them. Like leaving Katie to answer your question, um, I think that she was a little shell shocked with like how dramatic everything had been to that point. Mm-hmm. And so I think that that date was nice because it was just really really silly. And I was bummed that it ended the way it did because I wanted her to have that vibe at least going into like the next day or whatever. Unfortunately, with Mike getting her, uh, it got serious again. Um, but, you know, after talking with her, you know, because I, you do have those moments where, like, cameras aren't on you. And I was like, but real talk, like, how are you? Like, how are you doing? I know this mm-hmm. is hard. Like, mm-hmm. I know you're not sleeping a lot. I know that you're having to make really hard decisions. Like, right. are you happy? Um, and she was like, yes, it has been hard. But, like, I am happy. And I do really believe that, like my person is here. And so that was nice to hear, yeah. like, as we kind of parted ways and right. I went back to the real world. Yeah. Yeah. That's one world. thing that watching this season back, I'm so surprised. And is like every time she addresses the guys or comes in to kick off a rose ceremony or whatever it might be, she's very adamant of like, my husband is in this room. Like my fiance is here, which Tasha, I don't know about you, but in that role, I kind of felt uncomfortable saying that in speeches at times. Cause I was like, who knows what's going to happen. It changes so quickly. Did you ever feel that too as bachelorette? Oh my gosh. Absolutely. I try to avoid saying that just because like I, when I did say it, I wanted it to seem like very genuine and authentic. Yeah. Like yeah. I didn't want to throw it around all the time, but also again, my journey was a little bit different. Like I feel like I kind of walked into something, you know, mm-hmm. you came a bit later. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Okay, so Wells, you hinted at being a bartender for the guys. Was that right after this group date or when did that take place? It was like the next day. And it was, okay. it was actually, it's, it was funny. Now seeing the season air, it was funny. I didn't get the bit. And then once I saw like Blake's entrance and like how everyone was like, absolutely not. What is he doing here? <laughs> Third bachelor, and he gets a date. You know, like everyone being angry. I didn't understand like the gravity of that. So when they brought me in, Kaylin came in, and was like, "I got some bad news, but like I'm bringing in another guy, and like he's one of my good friends, and I vouch for him, and he's super nice." And so they were like, "Who is it?" I, you know, and then I show up, and they're like, "Oh, it's short shorts guy." All right, don't <laughs> yeah, worry about that. yeah. <laughs> they're like, "Oh." Oh, we're, we're cool as well. So keep us hydrated. Yeah. So that night that then you were, you know, giving them advice and playing bartender, what was the best piece of advice that you gave to them? Any good questions that they asked? Oh God. Um, yeah, you know, they were all freaking out and, and as much as like, as much as I love seeing Tasha and Caitlin, like be like this, this, like, girl power thing for Katie, which I do think is awesome. I do think that like those poor guys are like stranded in like the middle of nowhere, freaking Mm -hmm. New Mexico. And they're like, what the fuck am I doing here? (laughs) (laughs) Which I was like, I get it, dude. Like, Mm -hmm. and so, I mean, it was more of that. They were like, you know, like what happened to you in this situation? You know, like they didn't really remember my story. So like, when I told them like, yeah, you know, I went on a one-on-one and I went home, I got sent home, which I don't mm-hmm. think that's happened to anyone to this point on the show. No, and so that awesome. freaked them out. And I was like, the lesson to be learned here is that like, I remember having so many regrets. Obviously things have turned out absolutely wonderful uh, for me and, and the world worked the way it, it did. But at the time I remember having so many regrets, the things that I like left on the table or was like too shy to do uh, or too scared because I was concerned about how it was going to look on TV 
Um, and then after the show, I was like, I screwed myself because I wasn't mm -hmm. like bold. I didn't, I didn't like make decisions that would have helped me continue my process and, and my journey with Jojo. And I remember that being like a big thing. I was like trying to impart. I was like, I know it's hard. I know it's scary. Um, but like the truth of the matter is this show fit like, you know, fortune favors the bold. You need to get outside your comfort zone if you want to make an impression and don't do what I did and get, you know, kicked off on a one-on-one, -on -one. one, because you look like an <laughs> idiot on TV, and two, you're going you're gonna to regret it for a long time. And so mm -hmm. I think that was, and that was also like a, a reality shock to those guys that like, right. oh, you know, someone who is like so beloved by Bachelor Nation, if he can get kicked off on a one-on-one, -on -one, what, you know, what chance do I have? And so I think that was a, a good conversation.